How can you save time and effort managing email in Microsoft Outlook? Hi, I'm Dawn. In this online training, we'll look at three time-saving ways to process messages in your Outlook inbox. Search, Folders, and Search Folders. Instant Search. A huge bonus to personal productivity is using the Instant Search feature to quickly find Outlook items in all Outlook views, mail, calendar, contacts, tasks, and even notes. Plus, we not only can look for a word or phrase, but we can also narrow the criteria as to whether the message has attachments, what the date range was, who sent the message, other criteria such as the subject, where it's located, and you can even go back to recent searches. So it's a very robust search tool. Now, if you used search years ago in Outlook, this is so much better. Definitely make sure that this is part of your work in Outlook to save time and be more productive. Let's try some searches. So from my inbox, I'll simply come up to the search box here, and this is very similar to how it looks from other Outlook views. And I want to look for every message that refers to Dallas. I'll simply enter and we can then see that our results are finding Dallas, whether it's in the subject line or it's in the body of the message. Let's narrow that down a little bit more. Once you start a search, this brings up the context sensitive search tools ribbon. And from here then, could narrow this and say has attachments. This could make it much easier then to locate a specific message. I'll clear that. Let's try another search. Here, what I want to do is locate messages from a specific person. And so I'll choose from, and I'm looking for Robin and because she has sent me messages, it will pop up as a suggestion here. And I also want to narrow this down. Now, the results here would be very workable, but imagine a typical inbox that might have hundreds or thousands of messages. Not that I'm recommending it, but we might need to get a little bit more specific. And so with this then, let's say that I want to say has attachments. But notice some of the other criteria. It could be a time frame, for instance, this month, today, last year. So what will be helpful for you to really narrow down the search? From here, I'll go ahead and close that search. Now what I want you to see here, although we're focusing on our inbox, is that the search also works in other views. And I'm gonna to switch to the calendar. And one quick way to get there is with a keyboard shortcut, Control-2. And that will take me to my calendar. And from here then, once again, we have our search. And this can be a great way, especially if you're maximizing the use of your calendar, to really be able to dig in and find those. So be descriptive with those, especially if you want to go back and track down a particular appointment or meeting you had. And from this, I'll type in training. And now I can find all of those events where they included the word training. And I could even get even more specific. <laughs> was the subject training? Or if that was a particular keyword related to an individual with that. For right now, I'll just keep it as it is. But now we can see then our calendar can be in a list format and this is something whether or not you're doing searches so that we can see this information more clearly and I can go back and, and locate all of those events that included the word training. As you might notice here on the right hand side whether it's email or a calendar event then if you are leveraging categories which is another way to organize your inbox and other views and outlook then that would be another way that you would be able to search for key items within outlook i'll move back to mail or my inbox with keyboard shortcut control one now if you want to get more specific with your search that's available as well 
That is, this might be all that you need because it's so fast and it can be very easy. But a couple things to look for here. First of all, we have more. That is, these are all the different common properties that might be available about the message that you would like to zero in on. So that becomes one way for you to be able to do a search. Another thing to look at is recent searches. So this becomes another way for you to be able to go back to things that you use frequently. Now, if you find you have searches you use a lot though, this is a great use of the search folders feature, which I cover later in this training. Another option are the search tools. Here you would be able to specify locations to search. Now, the other thing to pay attention to is on the left-hand side, you also can specify the scope. And so with this, then it could be the current mailbox. You might want to search all Outlook items within this one search, all mailboxes. So that's especially helpful if you're managing other people's uh, inboxes. So explore that as another way to be able to either expand or get very specific with your search. Advanced find is another area to explore. And so if you're still not being able to get exactly what you're looking for or it's too broad of a search, then this becomes a way for you to get very specific in terms of phrases, who it's from, and be able to build in the criteria. You'll probably find that everything you need is going to be in that ribbon. But from here, we could specify who it's from. We could come into very specific things. For instance, items that aren't read or items that have attachments are, for instance, even sent just to me, different categories, the size, and you could even get more advanced from here. Here again, a very powerful and useful feature is to be able to work with instant search in Microsoft Outlook. Working with folders. What's your Outlook personality? Are you a filer or a piler? That is, do you move messages into a variety of folders or do most of your messages stay in your inbox? Most people choose to leave them in their inbox and even with the robust search tools in Outlook, keeping all of your message in your inbox is a huge drag on productivity as you're often touching a message many times over. Plus, it can be easy to miss important messages because you're skimming through so much content in your inbox. When you need to keep a message for future reference, keep your inbox clean and move it to the appropriate folder. Let's focus on working with folders. Now, many Outlook users create and work with folders which are topic-based, such as clients. And under clients, there might be big, important corporation, etc. Now, it doesn't take lo too long for this hierarchy to move from productive to complex with too many folders and topics. Plus, with so many of us checking email on our phones, having fewer folders might make more sense. There's a switch in philosophy now in Outlook. And certainly now with the Outlook search being so much more robust, it's easier to find messages regardless of the location. Consider moving from a topic-based to an action-based folder structure. This will be a lot simpler. For instance, pending, parking lot, processed, reference. There might be a reading folder uh, message you, you download four times when you are on travel or a not fo so focused on your inbox personal. That is, action-based folders give you a place to move messages without having a really complex system of folders. Now, as you explore which approach works best for you, another option is to apply a hybrid mix of topic and action-based folders. Let's look at different ways to create a folder. And you may already be quite skilled at this. One way would be to right-click on the primary or parent folder, such as the inbox. And so for clients, for instance, I could right click here and notice all of these options. And this would include also other folder management tools. So definitely explore those. In this case, I'll create a new folder and this could be big important client now. 
this is contrary to the philosophy of having it be action-based. And primarily what I want you to see here is that this is easy then for us to get really clogged up. Here's the hybrid approach with action-based folders. For instance, pending. We want to put it here while we're waiting for a follow-up. And so in Outlook, we could flag it for a follow-up and then be able to find it later. That is, maybe you have things that are processed. That is, I don't want to get rid of it yet, but it doesn't really need to go to a folder. That is, you might come back to it periodically and just delete. So here again, consider what makes sense for you. Now, another way for us to be able to create a folder is that we could go to the Folder tab, and from here is New Folder over on the left-hand side. The keyboard shortcut for this is Control-Shift-E. And so this is a, another way to work with or to create a new folder. It brings you into a dialog box. So it's just a different way to approach this. And you might find that that right-click menu is a lot faster to work with this. From here, if I was going topic-based, then perhaps if I'm planning on an upcoming conference, maybe I'll create a new one here. and simply choose OK. So different strategies for that. Now notice as well that is whether or not we had create, created a folder, we also have options here based upon where we're located. Then we would have the option, for instance, in this case this is an empty folder, but we could then focus on renaming, copying, moving, deleting. Look at all of these choices could sort, we'll talk more about that in just a moment, and add to favorites, which we'll also explore. Lots of options available for us in terms of folder management. Whether you work with just a few folders or a lot of folders, one of the keys to being able to clean up your inbox is not just a matter of just throwing a bunch of messages somewhere else, it's that you want to take action. And you probably have heard of a number of different time management and productivity tips. Find out what works well for you. One simple approach, especially when we're working with our inbox, is to make a decision so we're not touching a message all the time. Do we want to delete it? Are we going to do it? That is, if it only takes us a couple minutes, it might be a lot easier than marking it for follow-up or trying to remember to do it later. Is it something that someone else really should be taking on? If you know it's going to take longer, then that is something to perhaps defer and then flag it for follow-up or even make it an appointment item that you will dig into and address. So these are some of the things that you also want to consider. It's not just a matter of creating a folder structure, but whether or not those messages even need to go to the folder so that you are able to start clearing your inbox. Now, how do we move messages? Well, there's a lot of different options for that. One, for instance, is that we could simply drag a message to that. So we, here again, when we have more folders, then this can be a little bit more cumbersome. But for this message, for instance, I want that to go to my tech newsletters. So I could simply drag that. Now you'll see in a moment that favorite folders is a way to make this a much easier process. We also have the option to move, and this is available to us in a number of ways. In the home tab of the ribbon here is move, and then we would see our most recent locations here, and this would be a way for us to do that. Another option is to right click on a message and you will then also have the move option. So very similar to working off of the ribbon. And from this, you would also have the option to move to other folders and to manage them. Another option is the keyboard shortcut, Control-Shift-V. Now, you probably won't find this to be the easiest, but there always will be a keyboard shortcut option. And so just to know that this is yet another way to be able to move a message. And finally, 
we could create a rule in Outlook to automatically move messages from your inbox to a designated folder. And that might be the case for things like these tech newsletters, which I want to read, but I also don't want to have them get in the way of maybe higher priorities that I'm working with. Let's go back to those folders that we use on a regular basis. That's where we can take advantage of our favorites. Now this is a really helpful time-saving tool. For instance, my tech newsletters. I want to be able to work with that. Now I'm going to right click here and simply left click on add to favorites. This is an option that's also available in our folder ribbon. So let's say I am also wanting to focus on an upcoming conference. For this, I could then select it and either right click on it or I could from the ribbon choose add to favorites. So what happens with this then is that we are actually building a favorites area above our primary inbox folder structure. And this is something that you can continue to add to. Now these are just shortcuts and you always have the option for instance to right click and you could then remove it from the favorites. That is, as you might have projects that come in and out, then there might be some things that you no longer need to focus on. When you remove from favorites, it is simply a shortcut. And so you're not deleting the contents. That would happen if you actually physically remove the folder that we have in this case under our inbox. These favorites, are also things that you can rearrange. Now, if I wanted that conference to be above the tech newsletters, we could also add others here as well. And then this can be then highly customized to make it a lot easier. So for instance, here I have an email related to one of those conferences and I can simply drag right into it and have that then available. Likewise, here's something for my tech newsletter. So it becomes another way to also be able to easily access it, even if you do have maybe a little ambitious folder structure. The other thing to keep in mind is that in your existing folders, whether or not you're working with favorites, these can be rearranged. And so that is really helpful in something that wasn't available in some earlier versions of Outlook. And that's why a lot of people don't know about it yet. So from here then, if this was one of my priority conferences, I could actually drag it around, maybe important projects I want to move up. There could be other things that I'd like to rearrange. And so it's no longer necessary for this to be alphabetical order. But at any time, if you get too ambitious or you'd like to just put them back the way it was, you can simply move to whatever folder that might be. Now it could be within a specifically in conferences. Here I could right click here and simply say sort subfolders A to Z. And also you can see the move up and move down. So just these could be rearranged or I could go to my inbox. And notice that this option is also available in my folder tab of the ribbon. And so from here, then I could just rearrange all of those to be alphabetical order. So how can you leverage the folders and make them work better for you to be able to save time and to really clean up your inbox? Search folders. Searching in Outlook is pretty easy. But why bother typing out the same searches over and over if you perform them regularly? Search folders let you save those custom searches so you can get back to them with just a click or two. To start, you'll likely find your search folders at the bottom of the list of folders in your Outlook data file on the left hand side of the window. Now, each data file has its own search folder. So if you use Outlook to check more than one account or manage multiple accounts, you can set up different search folders for each one. Now, this will not show up necessarily 
until you have at least one search folder that's created. You'll see a few of them here. One way to create a new search folder is if this is available, you can simply right click here and choose new search folder. Outlook already has a number of predefined search folders that you can use to get started. Now, although you can't further customize them, they're definitely worth taking a look at first, just in case they cover what your needs are. Now I'll come out of this for just a moment, simply so that you can see that there's another way as well to be able to create a search folder. And this is from the folder tab in Outlook. And here is new search folder. The keyboard shortcut for this is also Control Shift P. So the, this is a way for you to set up a new search folder, whether or not you already have some displayed in your Outlook inbox. From this dialog box, then let's first of all create a simple search. Here we see a number of presets, reading mail, mail from people and list, organizing. And I want to see any mail that's been flagged for follow up. So I can really kind of narrow that down. We'll simply choose OK. And now we're done. That is, that's all we needed to do. And here we have then mail that has been flagged for follow up. Now I'll come back to my inbox and I will also then, let's say that I want to flag something about this particular upcoming trip. So I could simply hit the flag, but I'll right click on that instead. And I'm going to add a reminder that will come up for me then in a little bit here. I'll have it come up on Tuesday and we'll go ahead and OK. So now that is another message that's been flagged for follow up. And let's go ahead and look at that search folder. Now we see both of those. Now the reason why these messages are coming up this way is because of something called conditional formatting. And that is yet another way to be able to manage your inbox. That is to flag those messages in this case from the big boss so that they stand out. The thing to know about these search folders is that they are virtual. And if you decide to delete them, you no longer need them. You are not deleting the messages in them. You are simply deleting that particular search request. Now that's different than if you decided to delete physical folders and in that case then you would delete the content there. Now if this is something that you want to more easily access, this search folder and any others that you create are things that you can actually add to favorites. I'll simply right click here and choose add to favorites. Once again in favorites these are simply shortcuts. How can we make it easier to manage all of the content that you have in your inbox? Let's go back to our search folders and explore how we can create a custom search folder. Now, this lets you add additional criteria that maybe those predefined search folders just simply don't include. So those are pretty easy, but there might be times when you want to do that. So it's, it's for instance, specifically from your boss within a certain time frame or hasn't been read. Um, messages that are to and from a particular client. You can even use their full domain so you don't have to specify what could be a collection of, of many emails or even messages with attachments that are over a certain size. So let's go ahead once again and we'll create a search and I'll go to the ribbon but there were some other options that you have for that and rather than picking one of these standardized choices will come down to and choose custom, create a custom search folder. So from here now we'll pick the criteria. What do I want to call this? Well, this is going to be unread messages from the boss. What will stand out? What will make it easier for you? Next, we'll go to criteria. And here, who is it from? Well, I'll simply put in his email address. But there could be a lot more here. It could be a specific phrase that's found in the subject line, 
or even in the content, the message body. And so you know, dig into that and explore how this could be helpful. Here we have time frames, and I'm going to just dig in and explore a little bit more here for other choices. This is a way to narrow down the searches. And for this one, I want only messages that are unread. Those are two criteria there. Notice that you could also specify if there were attachments and other things like whether or not something was flagged for importance, or maybe we want to focus on the size of a message. What will help you to be able to create real specific searches that you can use over and over again? There's also a tab for advanced. This tends to be a more than what we need, but there is a, the ability then to really be specific about fields that are within those messages or even within other areas of Outlook, and then you would be able to search for a condition. Once you've specified what you want, simply OK through. And now I have a new search folder, unread messages from the big boss. And you can see here, I have a number of messages that I better respond to right away. Uh, somehow they got missed, and that's probably because I wasn't leveraging my folders and my search folders as well as I could. How will you take advantage of search folders to save time and to be much more productive working with your email in Microsoft Outlook? Now you've seen how to save time and effort in Microsoft Outlook by leveraging instant search folders and search folders. How will you apply these Outlook features to take control of your inbox? Thanks for watching.